What's going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's a beautiful spring day. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and it's time to harvest. This is what we've all been waiting for. Let's go! Let's start the harvest out with one of my all-time favorite fruits, strawberries. Let's grab some right here. This is a row of my favorite variety of strawberries. These are the shucks and strawberries. And this insect netting has made a huge difference for me this year. So I just put the insect netting out right when the strawberries started to ripen. And that has kept the birds off because the birds have been one of the major uh, problems that I've had in the past. As we come in here, you can see these, just so many strawberries. And it's keeping the birds off. So growing strawberries yourself, it's, uh, there's nothing like it because not only do you know that they're organic, they're delicious. You can get them when they're actually ripe. You can pick them when they're ripe and you can eat them fresh when they taste the best actually. So the insect netting has made a huge difference for me because I ran into the problems in the past where the bugs were getting out some of my strawberries. But the reason the bugs were coming in is because it started with the birds. The birds would come by, peck at the strawberries, leave holes in them, and then the bugs would come by and eat those. So by stopping the birds with the insect netting, we're basically stopping that whole uh, domino effect of the bugs and everything coming in too. So let's grab a bunch of strawberries. It looks like Tuck wants to come in for a sniff. Another reason that I love strawberries so much is because strawberries, it's like a almost the appetizer for all the fruits. So strawberry is one of the earliest fruits that I end up getting harvest from. So once I get the strawberries and they start ripening, that lets me know that the black cap raspberries, they're right around the corner. And the regular raspberries, like the red ones, those are close too. And the currants, they're even closer. And then after the currants and all those raspberries come the blueberries and stuff. So once the strawberries start, we know that we're gonna have a good extended berry harvest. Let's check what we got in here. Grab a few more strawberries and keep moving along. We got more sections. Here's my favorite ones. This is that classic shuckson. They hang pretty high a lot of times like this, so they're not on the ground. And then they've got this, this odd shape, but the flavor is incredible. It's like no other strawberries that I've tried. It's just so good in my opinion. So when you get a perfectly ripe like this, this is why we garden, this is why we grow our own food. Incredible, let's keep moving. We're not done with the strawberries yet. We still have another huge patch down here. And you'll notice I just plant an insane amount of strawberries because they're one of my favorite things to eat. So I make sure I grow a lot of them. I kind of use them as my uh, ground cover in my food forests. So underneath my trees and stuff, you'll see we have a lot of strawberries. This way we're making sure we get good harvest while we wait for the trees to produce. I'm gonna harvest a bunch of these strawberries, but I'm not gonna do it all on film because that would just take too much time. So I'll harvest some strawberries and then show you basically me grabbing them and how many I get because it's gonna take a good amount of time to get all these. We got a lot to harvest. One thing I wanna mention, when you're harvesting strawberries, what you should always do is have two buckets. Have one bucket for the good strawberries and then one bucket for the bad strawberries. This way when you're getting all the good ones, make sure you take out some of the ones that are rotted or passed like this. This way you can keep the bugs away as Tuck comes sneaking in like he usually does. So we're gonna keep harvesting. I'll show you how many strawberries we get. It'll be a lot more than this, but we've got other things we want to grab. So you'll notice this cabbage right here. This is starting to head up. We're not too far away from getting some cabbages. Some of the Brunswick cabbages are almost ready too. But we're gonna be harvesting greens. So we've got some spinach over here that we're gonna be grabbing some greens for. When it comes to the spinach, you can harvest, it's best when you just want the leaves. Harvest just the outer leaves, the large outer leaves of the spinach, like we're doing here. And like I'll show you in another spot. But the thing is, if you see the spinach starting to bolt, once it starts to show signs of bolting, you wanna cut the whole thing down and start eating those spinach because you can't prevent it from bolting once it's basically started. Let's keep moving to another section though. Grab some more spinach like we have right here. You see the spinach is much larger, nice big leaves on them. This must be the giant noble spinach. It's getting close to flowering, so I may uh, cut this one down today, but much larger spinaches. Then we've got some carrots and stuff here too. Don't look exactly ready, but we have some larger carrots. They might be ready in a little bit. Oh, looks like I get tipped Tuck off. He saw me do it. So he can have that small little carrot, munch on it when it's young. And then next to him here, you see we have a lot of these. We've got the Melissa Savoy, some of the Savoy cabbages. Just the texture on them is so, it's amazing to me. It's so beautiful to see. So let's keep moving along though. I've got this monster radish I want to show you. It's got a pretty cool inside. I think it's called the Pusa Jumina radish. I think that's what it's called, the Pusa Jumina. Let's go over here and grab some of these radishes. Then we'll get some peas, some lettuce, and just cherries and just keep grabbing more stuff. So here's this radish here. It's got these purple veins in the leaves. Pretty cool looking. Let me just see if I can get a nice one. So it's got a really nice color. 
as you'll notice, it's got this purple coloring. And then when you cut it on the inside, the flesh is purple too. So you can see a nice shape, nice taproot. This is what happens when you have good soil and you don't have a lot of things blocking it. So let's get this sliced up and Tuck will probably want to try it. So as we slice it, you'll notice, look at this. Look how beautiful that is. It's like a picture. One of the reasons I love gardening and nature so much. It's uh, what better colors can you paint than that? Beautiful picture. I just love it. So we've got a bunch of those we need to harvest too. I'll grab a couple of these and I've got so many radishes to harvest that I'm gonna probably pickle some because I need to do something with them. A few of you have been asking about Tuck and you'll notice why he's got some, some stuff on his ears. This guy, this little guy had an ear infection. So we've got some medicine in his ears so he's doing better now. But he just had a little ear infection. So we'll keep moving along though. Let's get some, some lettuces and stuff because we've got to harvest it. We've got too much to even eat. Let's grab some more greens. Some more of these spinach we have here because we got a lot to eat. So we'll just keep harvesting, harvesting. Then I'm gonna check some of these carrots and right as I check the carrots, you know who'll show up, this little guy. And actually, let me grab this lettuce here, the bronze mignonette. I'll grab some more lettuces too. I, I have a, a very lot of lettuce I need to harvest today. So I'll show you guys a bunch of that as I harvest it. And take that, not too bad. Looks beautiful. Again, going back to that radish. The stuff, when you grow it yourself, it, it, you want to be a part of it because the whole process is fun. Even just to look at it, it, everything's enjoyable in my opinion, especially the eating. And you can see Tuck has a lot of fun eating it too. Let's keep moving though. Let's grab some, uh, actually let's grab a carrot. Let's see if we got one ready. Let's see what we got here. Not too bad, nice shape. Decent carrot, it'll be a sweet one. Tuck's getting hot, you can see. It's in the 90s already, so he's gonna be hot today. We'll leave that over there, let him snack on it. And then let's grab some of this uh, kale and stuff back here, the scarlet kale. Same thing, let's grab the big leaves, let the little leaves continue to grow. Grab some of this, and then notice the, uh, the cabbages. Look at the size of these leaves. Incredible health, looking very good. Getting a little hot right now, but still looking good, and look at the Brunswick, I think it is, this cabbage. Woo, that thing's starting to head up. It looks like it's gonna be a monster. Looking great. And we'll get some more kale here, some scarlet. Let's grab some of the uh, dazzling blue. Look at that. Dazzling blue kale, the Lacinato one. We'll have one more big leaf. Then we got the broccolis and stuff heading up. Just starting to head up, you can see. Wait for that to get a little bigger. And then we're just gonna keep harvesting. I've got so many peas to harvest too. I mean, like this is like my fourth or fifth round of peas. Look how many you can see just in this one section. So what we're gonna do is just come out and harvest all these peas. I'll show you how many we get, but I'm not gonna be able to do all of it right now on film. So we've got a lot of snap peas. We've got uh, snow peas too. And then in one or two of these sections, not this section, in another section, I think over here, my snap peas, the, one, the section that's not doing as good as the other one, what I'm gonna do is start cutting these down at the base and start putting my cucumbers in because today's about 90, the weather's gonna start getting hotter. So these snap peas are gonna really start slowing down in production. So I don't wanna just, I already got so much out of them, I don't wanna get greedy. So what I'm gonna do is start focusing on the next round. So I'll get the cucumbers in the ground. This way we can get an earlier harvest. And then uh, another row of the peas in a couple weeks, I'll take those out and put more cucumbers in. This way, everything is always on a staggered kind of harvest. Okay, let's get some of these peas in here. I want to grab a few more heads of lettuce just to show you some of the different varieties we're growing. So one, this one right here, this is a uh, Paris Island romaine. So this is a romaine lettuce. You can see, beautiful. This is a head. We're going to cut this whole thing out. And you can see, nice Caesar salad. Looking beautiful. And then I want to grab one of the really red deer tongues. I believe they're called over here. You'll notice we grow a lot of salad because I just love eating it. And then you know, a couple weeks ago, the salad was at the point where it, when it was growing, I could keep up with it. I can keep eating it. Now we've gotten to the point where the weather's changing a little bit and I just cannot keep up with the salad. So on a day like today, we'll just harvest a bunch of it and then give it away to our friends and family and stuff and then just uh, start planting the next round basically. So let's get this really red deer tongue in, out. Man, that's a nice color. You know, it, I almost feel like an artist sometimes with how beautiful this stuff looks, but I'm not. 
All I am is just a hand that plants it. I don't have to make this stuff look beautiful or make it taste good. Let's keep moving though, more stuff to get. In the old food forest now, let's check out the raised beds. And this one's looking just so good. You can see even, even more lettuce here, that same kind of theme. But this section gets a good amount of shade, as you'll notice from this uh, hazelnut tree. So it's that good filtered shade. The lettuce seems to really enjoy that. And the cabbages are thriving in that situation as well. I'm not gonna grab any lettuce from here. I already have some of those varieties. But we'll move this way to the other bed and grab some of this lettuce. You'll notice right now this lettuce is just getting beaten down with the sun. So we're going to harvest some of this here, but some of the other lettuce that we leave, what I'm going to do is just cover this section with my hinged hoop house and then just put the shade covering in just over the lettuce here, just to extend the season of it. Let's grab one of these big ones though, maybe this one here, just to see how much food it is. Our bowl is filling up pretty quick. But this is the time of year where we get these kinds of things. You may think, dang, he's growing a lot of lettuce, man. James has got a lot of lettuce growing. I got more. Let's check it out over here. Ha <laughs> ha This section, we've got even more lettuce growing. And I'm going to probably cut most of this out today. Look at this, the uh, butter crunch over here. These are getting really close to being finished. Are almost past, so we're gonna harvest all these today too. But if I wasn't gonna, I could do that same thing of just taking the shade cloth and just laying it over this one side just to cover the lettuces over there so they don't bolt or go to seed. Let me show you some of the cherries though because we're starting to get some of those. And this cherry tree, this is the, by far the best it's ever looked. Look at it. I, few things make me happier than sitting in the shade or standing in the shade of the tree that you planted and then getting some of the fruit off of it. So the fruit isn't completely ripe, but we've got some ones over here that are really close and the flavor is so good already. They almost taste like mini plums. When they're completely ripe, they'll fall off the tree, but I like eating them at this stage too because the birds, they're so greedy and they're, they never stop. So you gotta make sure you get to them before all the birds do. Amazing flavor, good size cherry too. So sweet. And what we did was, as you notice back here, we did a few things. We hung CDs like this, because when the CDs spin, the way they reflect the light, some lower like this, some up higher. But the best way to prevent the birds is what we were trying to do, is just with an insect netting. We had the insect netting draped over the top, but then the rain came, so we didn't really want it to, uh, the fungal infection to get too bad, so we took the net off. But soon we'll bring the net back on. And the only other thing you really want to worry too much about, really, with cherries, besides some of the rot, is the splitting. So once the, once the rains come too strong sometimes, you can get a little bit of splitting. But we're not too worried about that. We're enjoying the cherries that we get. I wanna bring you over to another cherry real quick. Here's a Rainier, and these ones are almost ripe too. You can start seeing a little bit of the translucence, like this one. So, these cherries are a little smaller. Let's try these. Good. Not as sweet as the other one. Yeah. Not perfectly ripe. Still, still have time, but again, we do like to enjoy some before the birds get on it because the birds are relentless. Absolutely relentless. We can't be upset though, me and Tuck, for all the great things that we have. All the food, all the opportunities, and all the space. We only wish that you guys could take, you know, have the same opportunities as us to be able to grow some of your own food because, in my opinion, there's nothing like it. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. As you can see, me and Tuck have basically finished harvesting for the day. We're really happy with how much we got, and it's gonna be great to be able to eat this and also share this with other people. And we wanna encourage you guys to plant your own food because you can be doing the same thing. If you have the space and the opportunity, anyone could do this. It's not really that hard. It just takes some planning and some planting. Then you could get to the harvesting. And me and Tuck love making these videos so much because um, of one of my favorite quotes, basically. And the quote is that the price is easy if the promise is clear. So this harvest right here is the promise. And we wanna encourage you guys to put some of the effort in to pay that price so you can get to this point. And that's, again, one of the reasons we love sharing these videos. So we wanted to thank Jacob Bassin, one of the new channel members. Thanks for joining Team Grow. Me and Tuck really appreciate it. We're gonna get this inside, give a lot of it away, eat a lot of it, and then uh, get back to gardening. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down below. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Tuck and James, we'll be back at you again real soon. We out.